Hello everyone, my name is Giovanni and I run the website Potent Speaking. Today I want to take a look at the 2018 Champion of Public Speaking in Toastmasters. I want to take a look at her speech, what she did right, what she could have improved on, and I know it's kind of hard to say that about a champion, but there's always something that you can improve in public speaking. You're never perfect. So I want to talk about some of her opportunities to even get better at the speech, as well as all the things that she did right, what you can replicate if you want to do well in the international stage. So let's get started with this video. At the very beginning, you see her walk out after she's announced. She is loving this. Look at her. She is loving the moment. She's confident. She's standing tall. There's no hint of nervousness or ah, I'm not sure if I want to be here. That's really important because that's the first impression that people get of her. Now, life will sometimes feel like a fight. See how as soon as the audience starts, stops clapping, she's ready to go, she drops down into this dynamic pose and just starts talking. This is setting the tone for the speech. People are going to expect the speech to be pretty physical and she's going to be setting up a metaphor for the rest of the speech. Metaphors are an important way of conveying a topic that may be dry or hard to understand without the metaphor. The metaphor just adds a layer around it and makes it either more relatable or easier to understand or more interesting and her metaphor for the speech is the idea of life's trials and difficult times being punches and you being a fighter trying to get through them okay so th that's what she's doing at the beginning of the speech she wants to have that be her theme throughout the speech the punches jabs and hooks now notice she does three different types of punches there and says three different types of punches as well so she is matching what she's saying to what she's doing and that's important some people would just do three normal punches and that doesn't get them as invested into what you're talking about will come in the form of challenges obstacles and failures yet if you stay in the ring and learn from those past fights, at the end of each round, you'll be still standing. Okay, so still standing is going to be her catchphrase throughout the speech. She's basically introducing her metaphor and her catchphrase all at once so that later in her speech she can come back to this and hammer it home. Every winning speech and even top three speech that I have ever seen in Toastmasters has a catchphrase. It is the most one of the most important things that you need to have in your speech. If you don't have a catchphrase, you're probably not going to win. That's just It's just straight up like that. The catchphrase is something that the audience will remember because you say it multiple, multiple times and you emphasize it. They're going to take that home and that's what's going to influence their behavior because they can remember that catchphrase, even if they don't remember the rest of your speech. Okay, So still standing is hers. Notice how with her hands she emphasized those words standing. still standing and that way with her vocal uh, variety and the way she used her hands it's very clear that this is an important phrase and she'll bring it back later in the speech mr. contest chair fellow fighters can you think of a time when life tried to knock you down who was your toughest opponent? Okay, so she just asked two questions that get the audience to think about the topic of the speech and how it applies to their own lives. That's really important because you want the audience to relate to the speech. Most often, our most challenging opponent is ourselves. Round one! college I dropped out of college not one okay so watch how she moves across the stage quite a long time silently and then she does this round one thing uh, it's clear that this is going to be the way that she basically uh, breaks up her points 
and that long stage movement was probably a bit more than most most speeches will have but re keep in mind that this is a massive stage with lots and lots of people watching so although it looks like a lot of movement on camera it's really quite reasonable you need to use your stage fill up the space that you've been given to speak not two not three but four times I told myself college isn't for me and I would never go back. She's about to move on to the next point, but let me just mention here. She's dropped out of college four times. She explains what she told herself, but she doesn't talk about what that felt like for her to drop out of college four times. And this is important. The emotional resonance in the speech is going to be a theme that I'm going to talk about throughout the speech. Round two, marriage. I married my soulmate, the love of my life, my best friend. And he was fine too. <laughs> we were married for eight long, beautiful, amazing months. Okay, that's typical expectation-breaking comedy. If you build up something in the audience's minds, they think they know exactly what you're going to say. In this case, it's years. And then you break that expectation. This kind of comedy is really easy to apply to your own speech. If you are having trouble coming up with jokes, you can easily do this kind of comedy. You heard right. Months, not years. That part right there was probably a saver line of a sort. Basically, she wasn't sure if people would laugh that hard at her original line, so she added that in just in case they didn't laugh. Um, or maybe she didn't, but that's probably why she did that. In this case, I would have left it out because the audience knows that you said months, not years. You don't have to repeat it. It was like immediately after we said I do, the heavyweight champion came in and delivered an electrifying knockout blow to our vows. Boom! Divorced. <sighs> Round three, speaking. <laughs> to any other audience, this probably wouldn't have been that funny, but here's the thing about the Toastmasters World Championship. Everyone there is probably in Toastmasters, and everyone there is invested in public speaking. They love it. That's a big part of their lives. They paid a lot of money to be here, and it's all about public speaking. So she's just connecting with her audience. It's, it's that simple. If this was an international convention on human rights, she could make some kind of joke about human rights, although, wow, that sounds really sticky. Um, but in public speaking... Right here, she's connecting with her audience with a joke that has to do, well, it's not really a joke, but it's funny to them because it has to do with the thing that they're extremely passionate about. And of course, uh, speaking is now being compared to marriage and college as a big life event, a big knockout punch to her. So they left, and she knew that they probably would. In 2015, I competed for the first time in the international speech contest. I won at the club level. I won at the area level. I won at the division level. Then the district level was on the way. I was on the road. I was on fire. I was unstoppable. I lost. I was crushed. After going. Okay, so right here she summarizes the three rounds that she went through. At this point, she still hasn't said anything that makes us really resonate with her emotionally. And this is so important. I'm surprised, actually, that the speech was the, the championship speech because most of the time, the speakers here are able to really grip you with the emotional moment, to really show you a window into how they were feeling at the low point in their lives. And here she says, I was crushed. It's just like an adjective. It's, I was crushed. It's not really letting us see what it was like. And if there is one thing to improve about the speech in general, 
then this would be probably the number one thing. But she still won, so it worked for her. Going three rounds and taking hit after hit, I was ready to throw in the towel. I was down for the count. Six, seven, eight. When was the last time life knocked you down? So she's finished talking about the low part of her story or her life. And this is an important aspect of Toastmasters uh, championship speeches that a lot of people don't realize. Almost every winning speech has a story arc that matches kind of like the, the traditional story arc. You have a protagonist, which is almost exclusively the speaker. I don't, I don't recall a, a speech where the protagonist was someone different. It's usually the speaker is the protagonist. The challenge is the topic of the speech. So whatever challenge comes up in the story is what you're actually talking about. And then some mentor or maybe a life experience, some kind of event. Usually a person, though, causes the protagonist to find a solution to that problem. And then the speaker shares the solution with the audience so that we can also learn how she got to the good part of her life, right? So sometimes the order is mixed up. But those elements are almost always there. In her case, what she's doing is, I had three problems, and they're all related under this category of punches that life throws at me. And then here, she's asking the audience, have you had these problems as well? Trying to relate it to them. In the next part of the, her speech, she's going to talk about how she overcame the problems and what she learned, maybe who she learned them from. So here we go. Who was that lifeline that you reached out to to help you stand back up? Was it your family, your friends, or did you hold on to your faith? Maybe you've never been knocked down, but you've seen one of your family members take a devastating blow. Now this is interesting. She is basically trying to ensure that everyone in the audience can connect with her speech. Because what she's doing here is, the main problem is, you got knocked down. The secondary problem is, maybe you have seen someone in your life get knocked down. What she's basically trying to do is, in case there's someone here who's totally happy, never been knocked down, they don't really re resonate with the speech, maybe they can think about someone who has been knocked down in their life, so that way the speech will resonate with them emotionally and apply to their own lives. It's, a, it's an interesting approach. It's, it's smart, although it makes it kind of like a horoscope of speeches. Like, uh, it's as generic as possible. Have you ever been knocked down or faced a challenge in life? Slash, have you ever seen someone else face a big challenge in life? It's kind of generic, right? And this is a big aspect that some people have criticized. But, you know, sometimes the metaphor can take over and make it more interesting. In this case, this metaphor of life being a boxing match made it more interesting enough that the generic topic and the generic application is still good, plus her delivery is, is excellent. So she got away with it, but honestly, um, not to criticize someone who's much better than me, but you could have done more with this topic. You could have been more specific. And I think that it's it's more of a risk to be specific, but it's usually going to pay off. That's just my personal opinion on the matter. Were you the lifeline that they were reaching out to to help them stand back up? Were you the coach in the corner saying, get up, get up, stand up? As I gathered all the strength within myself to pick myself back up, stand. Instead of looking into a mirror of defeat, it became a window of possibilities. I got back in the ring. 
went back to college. I got my degree and I graduated magna cum laude. Yeah. After failing four times, I was still standing. Mm, mm, mm. After my loss at the district level, <laughs> I'm speaking to you from the world championship stage. It's a moment. Thank you. Thank you. Even after suffering loss, I'm still standing. As for my marriage, I'm still in training. <laughs> okay, so here she does another expectation breaking humor. We're expecting her to say still standing. She says still in training. Um, note and also we expect her to resolve the marriage issue, but she doesn't. She actually says I'm still working on it, which is not usually the case. Most of the time they're like everything's great now because I fixed it. Um, but she's resolved all three problems that she talked about in the beginning of her story. And then she's added humor here. Now, the next set of jokes is kind of easy topics to joke about. Relationships and like being on the prowl for one. That's pretty easy humor to add to your speech. So if, you're, if you don't feel confident that you can be humorous, this is the kind of topic that is very easy to get a laugh about. Now, I'm sure she is extremely funny. I want you to know that she apparently wrote this speech the day before the competition, which is incredible. I think she had elements of it already, but if she truly wrote this speech the day before the competition or that night, um, then that means she is able to create quite a excellent speech in very little time, and humor usually takes a lot of time to develop, so it was probably wise of her to not add a ton of humor and just go for safe jokes. I have not yet found Mr. Wright, but this is an international convention. <laughs> and there are thousands of men from hundreds of different countries. So single Toastmasters, <laughs> even after my divorce. It's funny because this probably wouldn't be nearly as funny if it was a guy delivering that joke. Just a thought. I'm still standing. My challenge to you is to stay in the ring. Whether you're a fighter or a coach, if you're on the side of the ring coaching, or if you're in that ring throwing those jabs and those hooks, when that final bell rings, ding, 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 the fighters and the coaches will raise their hands in victory singing, I'm still standing, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still standing. Very nice. Now catch that. She expected them to sing. She intended for them to sing. But then she paused for long enough and she thought, oh, they're not going to sing. I better move on. And then they did start singing right as she decided that, and she had to recover, which she did a really good job of recovering. She just said, very nice, enjoyed the moment, and kept going. Um, I think she could have guaranteed that they start singing with her, sooner at least, if she had done... Still standing! If she had extended this arm in the same way towards the audience at that moment, then it would have been clear that she wanted the audience to sing with her. Very nice. <laughs> Stay in that ring. And even after you take a few hits, use what you learn from those previous fights. And at the end of each round, you'll remain still standing. Mr. Contest Chair. She ends her speech the way that probably a third of Toastmasters championship speeches end, which is repeating your catchphrase at the very as the very last words of your speech. In fact, the speech I'm working on for the same competition has that element. 
I introduce the catchphrase some point early in the speech and then I use it at the very end as the last words I say. This is a very effective technique. And I also want to note this speech was one of the uh, slowest in terms of words per minute that I have ever seen. In fact, I've recorded like 15 different Toastmaster speeches, the words per minute, and several other attributes about them. And this was at 80. The second place, or the first place one was at 76. And what I mean by first place is the slowest speech, not she was the first place in this competition. Anyway, so 76 words per minute versus 80 words per minute. And I noticed that a lot of it has to do with the physicality. A lot of people paused and speak as slowly as she did in this speech, but she also did a lot of acting and physical uh, movements, and those took time away. So all I have to say on that matter is the amount of or the speed of the speaker generally doesn't vary that much. It's, it's usually between 100 and 120 words per minute, but the amount that you act might influence how many words you can actually say. I'll just end with this. Um, she did an excellent job. There has been some criticism about the speech and some of the prior speeches about the same thing, and that is Toastmasters is becoming a competition where you have to be kind of a comedian and you have to do a lot of crazy physical expressions and all kinds of movements, and it's not really a speech anymore. All I have to say about that is, first of all, speeches differ depending on the audience and how they're scored, right? If you had three different competitions with three different judging ballots, the types of speeches that would win would be different in every single one of them. The Toastmasters ballot tends to encourage physicality as one of the things that you can get points for. In addition, humor is one of the easiest ways to get your audience to care about you, to engage with you, and to really listen to your speech. So humor is an effective technique. Now let me note, this was the least funny speech, <laughs> that sounds really mean, but it's not meant to be. The least funny speech that uh, I have recorded in the 15 speeches that I've analyzed, it had around six to seven laughs. And there's another speech that had about seven laughs, but it didn't win. So she was able to win with less humor than usual, but she used a lot of physical movement. There are other years where people win with not that much physical movement, but plenty of humor. One or the other, it doesn't matter that much. The problem I have with that criticism is it's kind of ignoring the fact that the speakers on the international stage need to cater to what the judges are looking for. And if the judges are looking for this kind of energy, then you got to give it to them, okay? There's no reason to try to reinvent the wheel and try something completely different than what works. Now, is there an argument for whether the judging criteria should be changed to make this kind of speech less common? I don't know. I'm not going to weigh in on that because there's several arguments on both sides. I personally enjoy that you can have a completely different type of speech and this is the world championship of public speaking. Lastly, I'll mention, if she was able to adapt to the type of speaking that's involved in Toastmasters, I am sure that if she were asked to do a TED talk or a TEDx talk or talk to some students at a university, she wouldn't do the same things that she did in this speech. She knows her audience, okay? Any good speaker can know their audience and cater to them. So I don't think that she's just a one-trick speaker who can only do physical movements. I'm sure she can do a lot more than that, and so can any other champion of the World Championship of Public Speaking. Alright, well thank you for watching, and enjoy it.